We are delighted to have Neil Gibson, Chief Economist at EY, to join us. Neil heads the economic advisory and forecasting role in EY across many sectors. Neil leads um, Neil is the professor, visiting professor of economic policy at the University of Ulster, and he's going to talk about trends, interesting areas for our angels to invest, and other things. You're very welcome, Neil. Thank you very much indeed. I'm just noticing I look somewhat more haggard than I do in my cover photo there, so that's what COVID's already done to me. Um, I'm delighted to, to, to join you all today, albeit virtually. And I'm going to take the next 15 minutes to give you a little bit of a flavour of um, uh, the economic trends that we're seeing, but really try and focus. I think we've all had enough of just how bad things are. And although I won't shy away from some of that, I think we're going to spend a bit more time thinking about what shape the recovery might be, what opportunities that might present for the investment and the entrepreneurial community. Uh, as a firm with our own Entrepreneur of the Year programme, we're very close to the entrepreneur family on the island, and it's always a hugely inspiring tale to see how uh, some of these big problems are indeed solved by some of our great thinkers across the island. And as we've already heard, I'm sure many of you watched that video when you were coming back from the break, uh, with a touch of both joy and a little bit of sadness, maybe looking at some of the things that we miss, some of the things that we can't do. There were shots of airports, of people socializing, and really one of the themes that I'm going to talk about in this economic update is that though we are seeing a world reshaped and changed by COVID, I don't want us to lose sight of the things that are precious to each and every one of us. And in fact, the eagerness to return to some of those activities will be crucial to the sort of economic recovery that we have. And many of the good ideas that people had for businesses or the journeys that we're on that may seem very treacherous or unsure at the moment, I would like to give them at least some comfort that the early evidence from other countries and indeed even survey evidence closer to home is telling us that there is an eagerness to get back to some of those things that we saw before. So I'm going to uh, just share my screen here and let you uh, hopefully uh, see these just a few short slides. I think uh, five or six economic slides is enough for anybody. Um, I want to try and give a flavour of where the economic uh, recovery is. It's probably not quite as um, uh, clear as we might hope at this point. The data, as often is the case for economists, is a little bit further behind than you would like. So we're relying on a lot of partial information. But essentially, economists have been catching up with uh, the virus in a way. Maybe they're not too sure of um, uh, how the data would actually play out. And indeed, this wasn't something that their economic models had any uh, previous history to, to look back on. And so the economic forecasts across all countries, these are from my old colleagues in Oxford Economics, have been being revised down consistently. You can see the, the uh, different indicators there of the March forecast, then April and now May. And in fact, many economies are beginning to push towards a, a fairly um, startling sort of minus 10 type level of contraction. I think it's notable though that in one case, Italy, the May forecast is actually better than the April one, suggesting that as we begin to see some of the uh, reopening and re-energizing of our markets, we're actually seeing some of that coming back just a little bit quicker than some people had feared. People may be feeling that there would be a great nervousness about the health concerns, but actually there's been a lot of pent up demand and an eagerness to get back out and spend and get back to um, and something approaching normal or a new form of normal. So I don't want to shy away from the fact that the conditions are going to be tough. There's probably nobody on this call uh, uh, today or in this conference who's not going to be living through a recession in their own economy. But unlike the Great Depression of the 1930s, and you're going to hear talk of that or the financial crisis, these are quote unquote the worst figures on record. But in many of those cases, particularly the 30s, we didn't know whether prices would end. We felt that everything we knew was breaking down. And the literature from then tells us that people really didn't have a sense that any form of economic recovery would come. This is a very different world. People recognize that this um, particular crisis has been, apologies for that, but this particular crisis has been um, something that we have um, not expected, but that we also know has an end, that we know that there could be uh, if not a vaccine, there'll begin to be some level of 
dealing with it or finding a way to uh, work and to socialize in a different manner. And I think that sort of change gives us a little bit of hope that people will perhaps come back a little bit quicker than maybe has been the case in the previous crises. And the government has clearly stepped forward in a way that many people didn't imagine. Across all of our economies, we've seen unprecedented levels of government support. But aside from the economic benefit that that has brought or the cushioning that it's provided, it also is a very important juncture in our developing economies in that it maybe gives us the opportunity to re-energize a little bit of that social partnership, that idea that we're going to need entrepreneurs, corporates, citizens, business in general, and government working together to solve certain problems and deliver certain services. So more of a societal approach to some of our challenges. A lot of people are asking what shape of recovery. It started with a lot of debates around different letters of the alphabet. Would it be V-shaped, U-shaped, or L-shaped indeed, some people talking about. I think the best estimate that we have at the minute would be to think of it something like a sort of serrated or a seesaw. We're gonna have a little bit of a, 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 a pick upwards, but there will be missteps and steps backward. We might see high profile sports events canceled, postponed. We might see certain lockdowns re, re, uh, put back in place in certain localized markets. We will get bits of data coming out that shock the markets. We'll see things fall back on the point of maybe a poor jobs number from a key market. So you're going to have a very patchy stop-start recovery. You're also going to find that as the outworkings of this um, recession work their way through the system, there will be secondary waves of economic damage, not just health concerns. So for example, we're going to see a lot of um, uh, businesses talking about paying a lesser fee, trying to get their costs down. That's going to impact on property markets. That's going to impact on their own suppliers. We're going to see advertising revenues down for many companies. And we're going to see some of these behavioral shifts changing the profile, for example, of what sort of business our hotels or our restaurants can expect. So best case we're looking at is something of a kind of seesaw effect as we tick back upwards. But we are looking like, at least for the island of Ireland and, uh, and certainly most near at hand European markets, that we're at least on that upward curve now, which is encouraging. And we have reshaped and had a new view of government, of business, of finance, our own individual sense. There will be benefits that have come from even this most tragic of times. And I'm, I'm going to come back to those to end on a, on a positive note. Just focusing very quickly on Ireland. The forecasts have been evolving from early numbers, our sales, ESRI, were out in March with figures of 7% contraction, which were seen as rather shocking at the time, uh, somewhat uh, uh, wouldn't be uh, held in the same light if they were produced today. Uh, IBEC just out recently with an 11% contraction, ESRI 12%. Our own view is probably something like 11% contraction. Oxford Economics on the more optimistic end. So quite a wide range of possible outcomes. And as I said, one of the critical things is the influence that each and every one of us has in our own economy on the shape of this recovery. The recovery will be a function of what our businesses, of what our investors, what our citizens do as much as it will be around our government policy. So whether those uh, angel investors continue ahead with the things that they were, the money they were going to put in, whether it's you and I going out for a coffee when it's safe to do so, or going to the cinema, or go, or a business deciding to buy in lunches from a local restaurant on a Friday. These all are little points of activity that will trigger some level of economic recovery. If we all sit cautiously and are uncomfortable and unsure and unsafe and unwilling to spend, then the recession will be deeper than it otherwise would be. We heard reference earlier to kind of relay races. Think of the economy the same. The government's run the first leg. It's put the money in to try and support incomes through the crisis, but it doesn't have a bottomless pit of money. After all, it's only spending our own taxpayers' money on our behalf. So what it needs is more of that tax revenue. It needs to pass on that baton to businesses and consumers to lead the recovery later in this year and into next. And the data, and I'm picking Ireland uh, um, uh, because of where we're, we're, we're meant to be hosted today in Cork, but actually, this would hold for any of your economies. The economy is an interconnected ecosystem, and we all know that. 
But this crisis has maybe made that more stark than perhaps many of us realized. At the beginning of this crisis, you heard people talk about how the impact might be limited to or, or focused on the tourism sector, the arts sector, the retail sector. But actually, if we look at the data and the number, the percentage number you see on the screen is the percent of the workforce in Ireland that at the peak of the crisis were either had lost their job or were in receipt of government wage, wage subsidy. And yes, it's around 100% in accommodation and food and other services, which includes leisure. Retail is high as well. But construction's up there. So is real estate. And look to the other side, and actually some of the numbers are just as high or higher than you might have expected in manufacturing, in ICT, in professional services. So we recognize this interconnection between our purchases, where our workers pay their salaries, and the choices that we make in those spending decisions will influence this ecosystem considerably. Many of the messages I'm giving to a lot of my corporate clients is around the linkages that they play in their own local economy. Maybe it's a sponsorship of a local arts or a sports institution. How much are they going to need the money when things are so tough for them now? Maybe we won't have the same supporters at the events, but my goodness, we'll be playing our role as a civic leader if we step forward when others step back. Think of maybe if we were thinking of taking on 200 staff, would we ease that down to 100 because demand has eased? Or would we consider still taking 200, but maybe offering them a three and a half or a four day week? Maybe some of those will be the thought processes that many of our bigger firms, indeed all of our firms will go through embracing and adopting this more flexible world. I think if I've heard one thing more than anything else during this lockdown is a lot of people saying, reappraising the balance, maybe four and three, four days of work and three of play, the better balance than five and two. These are the sorts of questions, philosophical questions we can have at a time of great crisis. But what we certainly realize is that we need this web, this complex web ecosystem to really make our economies and our regions function. You saw it in that very inspiring video clip, all the different parts of our economy that function. We certainly, whether it's been in the UK clapping for the NHS, we've certainly recognized the role that jobs play in our society. And one of the big positives that might come from this crisis is really to get back to that mantra that we should all have that every job matters. We think differently of the people that clean our offices, that deliver our packages, that fix our computer systems when they're sitting at home on our desks. We really do need all workers to make our economy function in the way that we hope and wish that it would. And the consumer is changing as a result of this crisis. There's lots of consumer research that we do at EY. And I just wanted to pick out one chart to really give us a bit of a flavor of how that changing consumer is not just about staying frugal or continuing to cut spending. There's actually a great desire to get back, to get back with the buying, to be cautiously extravagant, if that's not an oxymoron, to really try and drive an economic recovery. And that's what I leave you with as a final thought is, I know that we often say, I'll never fly again, I don't feel comfortable going to an event. But actually, when we look at the survey, people miss a lot of what made that video so special and what makes many of the businesses that you run or have funded or supported important. It gives us a sense of purpose and of place. We miss our family and friends. We want to hold loved ones again. We want to go for a pint or a meal. And so yes, the world will change in the way that we purchase, be entertained and do business. But even we heard from Edna, she spoke so eloquently about the electronic possibilities and remote working, and yet more than once spoke about her desire to be back in Cork and with us all personally. And I would echo that sentiment, that we still need to spend time together, embrace and be precious about the things that we miss, and bring some of them back into our economy when it's safe to do so. Yes, we will be more digitally enabled. Yes, we will think differently about the pace at which things can be done when things really matter. But the world will be embraced some of the things that made us the special place that we are. And as Edna said, I too look forward to hopefully getting a chance to present to you all again in the future in person, because that part of what makes us special is still important. COVID will pass, the economy will recover, reshaped, reformed, but hopefully with some lessons learned and still as entrepreneurial and creative as it has always been.
Thank you very much.